Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss the analysis of an anion from the qualitative analysis of the salt from which we have to analyze the one acid radical and one basic radical or we can say one cation and anion from the given salt. So the first question of the why is why anion is known as an acid radical. So this is the reaction here. When an acid reacts with an base, then there is a salt is formed and now the anion which is obtained here is from the acid part that is why it is known as an acid radical so the first question you must know that why cation is known as an basic radical or why anion is known as an acid radical cation obtained from a base basic radical anion obtained from an acid hence it is an acid radical so in class 11th and 12th total 11 cations are anions are there <coughs> in class 11th and 12th Total 11 anions are there carbonate, sulfide, sulfite, nitrite, chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate, acetate, sulfate, and phosphate. Now, these are categorized into three groups on the basis of their reaction with dilute H2SO4 or the conch H2SO4. So, the first category here is the so, the first category here is dilute H2SO4 and the anion showing the reaction with dilute H2SO4 are the carbonate, sulfide, sulfide and nitrite. Similarly, the anions which show reaction in conch H2SO4 are the chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate and acetate and two anions which do not show reaction with dilute H2SO4 as well as the conch H2SO4 is the independent ion known as an sulfate and the phosphate part. Now the first step for the analysis that take a solid salt and add dilute H2SO4 then there is a chance of 5 observation can be there. Okay? For example, in case of carbonate, if a salt contain carbonate and we are adding the dilute H2SO4 then there is an evolution of a colorless gas which turns lime water milky. Now we know that carbon dioxide is a gas evolved which can evolve which can turn the lime water milky. So by this observation we can infer that salt contain carbonate ion in it and we have to perform the confirmatory test of these, this ion. So two confirmatory tests are the dilute HCl test and the MgSO4 solution test. In the first case we take a salt solution and to this we add the dilute HCl then there is an evolution of gas will take place. Now for example we have a calcium carbonate. To this we are adding HCl, then the formation of CaCl2, H2O and carbon dioxide is evolved in this case. So this is the first observation here in the dilute HCl that a carbon dioxide is evolved. Now which turn lime water milky. Now this carbon dioxide when passed through the lime water CaOH whole twice then there is a formation of a milkiness because of formation of calcium carbonate. So this is the first test that is the dilute HCl. When we are adding dilute HCl, then there is an evolution of a gas, a brisk effervescence is there and when this gas is passed through in a lime water, it turns lime water milky. Now the second test here is the MgSO4 solution where we have to add MgSO4 to the salt. Now for example, if there is a salt of sodium carbonate here, for example, we are taking the Na2CO3 and we are adding MgSO4, then it is forming Na2SO4 plus MgCO3 here and this MgCO3 is of white precipitate. So in case of MgSO4 solution we get the white precipitate. So to the solid salt solution we are adding the MgSO4 solution and we are obtaining the magnesium carbonate precipitate as a white precipitate. So this is the first anion analysis with the confirmatory test. Now the second one here if we are taking the solid salt and adding the dilute H2SO4 and if we are obtaining the burning sulfur smell which is when passed over a solution containing the potassium dichromate then it turns that solution green which infer from this which we infer that it contain a sulfite in it and the two confirmatory tests for this are the BaCl2 and potassium dichromate test. Now what happened in case of the BaCl2 test? So we take a solid salt solution to this first of all we are adding the acetic acid and then we are adding the BaCl2 then there is formation of white precipitate of BaSO3 the white precipitate is formed when BaCl2 react with the sulfite ion and now this precipitate is soluble in HCl now for example now to this precipitate if we are adding the HCl 
then this will dissolve and evolution of carbon dioxide uh, sulfur dioxide will be there now the reaction behind this is for example this is a sulfide salt and we are adding the bacl2 then there is a formation of baso3 is there that is the white precipitate which is formed here now in this white precipitate if we are adding the dilute hcl then again this precipitate dissolve and it form bacl2 and the gas release here is so2 here so the first step to the solid salt solution we are adding the bacl2 then there is a formation of white precipitate is there to this white precipitate if we are adding the dilute hcl then again it is dissolving because bacl2 is formed and it releasing the so2 gas here now the second confirmatory test is a potassium dichromate test in which we have to take a salt solution and if we are adding the bacl2 then again baso3 is formed now in this white precipitate if we are adding the potassium dichromate acidified potassium dichromate then the green color solution is obtained so in the first case white color precipitate is formed and in the second case a green color solution is formed so these two are the confirmatory test for the sulfide now the third observation if we are taking the solid salt and adding the dilute h2so4 and instead of these two observation if this observation is obtained that is a rotten egg smell is obtained and when these fumes are passed over the lead acetate paper it turns black by this we infer that sulfide is present and now the two confirmatory test for this is is a sodium nitroposide test and the lead acetate test now now you have observed what are the observation here are the confirmatory test potassium dichromate is a potassium dichromate test lime water turn milky which means again we are adding hcl and then we are passing that gas into a lime water so these all these observation are also the confirmatory test so if you are learning this part you have already learned the confirmatory test for this so the first part here take a salt solution to this you add the sodium nitroposide solution then it turn a purple or a white violet in color which means sulfide is present take a salt solution add lead acetate then again the solution become black which confirm that sulfide is present here so the reaction behind these two tests are in case of lead acetate when we are adding lead acetate in a sulfide salt the black precipitate of pbs is formed so the one of the viva question is what is that black precipitate that is the lead sulfide is there now the viva question from the uh, sodium nitroposide test what is that violet color it is a complex this is a coordination compound complex you can observe here na4 square bracket fec and whole 5 nos is there so it is a violet or a purple color complexes here which is formed now the fourth observation now if we are taking the solid salt and add dilute hso4 and in that case a red brown gas is evolved just on heating or we can say directly we are getting the red brown gas and if we pass that gas in fe feso4 solution then it again turn black so now from this we can easily infer that this is a confirmatory test also so by this we confirm that nitride is present here now the nitride can easily confirmed by further these three confirmatory test feso4 solution diphenylamine drop solution and starch iodide solution so the first case take a salt solution add feso4 a dark brown color obtained solution which means nitride is present then to the salt solution add a few drops of di diphenylamine drop then we can say a black or a brown color solution is obtained then to the salt solution add dilute h2so4 then small amount of ki potassium iodide followed by the drops of starch solution then it turn the solution deep blue in color so these three observation easily confirms that solution contain nitrite in it now on adding dilute h2so4 if we are getting no observation that is no gas is evolved so in that case carbonate sulfide sulfide and nitride all these anions are absent now the second part of an ion analysis is the reaction with the concentrated h2so4 now for this we take a salt and to the salt we add the concentrated h2so4 then we are having the chance of five observation will be there now what are these observation can be so if there is a colorless gas is obtained 
that is a fumes are obtained but they are colorless and if we are dipping the rod dipped in ammonium hydroxide then there is a evolution of white color fumes of ammonium chloride is there so when there is a colorless gas by this we can infer this is a chloride ion similarly if we are getting a reddish brown vapors there and these vapor when passed over the starch paper it turn that paper yellow so by this we infer that it is a bromide ion similarly on adding salt and conch SO4 if we are getting a dark violet vapors and it turns the starch paper blue now itself dark violet itself is an observation so if we are getting the dark violet vapors which means it is an iodide and it is further changing the color of starch paper to blue so these three anions are the conch SO4 anions and these are very important one because their confirmatory tests are same that is why I am taking in it in only one single group for example the first test is the AgNO3 that is a silver nitrate so what happened in this case take a salt solution for example in the first case I am taking a solution here and adding the AgNO3 and we know that here it contain a chloride so it form a precipitate white color precipitate of AgCl similarly we are taking a bromide solution which means it contain a bromide and we are adding the AgNO3 then again AgBr precipitate is there if we are taking a chloride uh, iodide and we are adding the AgNO3 then again we get AgI so in all three cases if we are adding AgNO3 we are getting a different color precipitate in the first case it is a white color precipitate in the second case it is just a off white or we can say pale yellow or light yellow not pale yellow light yellow precipitate is formed whereas in case of iodide it is a yellow precipitate is formed a complete yellow precipitate here it is a light yellow and in the first case it is a white so this is a common confirmatory test for three halogen that is the reaction with AgNO3 now the second common test for this take a solid salt it can be of chloride it can be of bromide or it can be of iodide now what we have to add we have to add a solid MnO2 into it and then we have to add the conch S2SO4 into it and in all the three cases we get the different observation on heating now if it contain the chloride and if we are heating it containing MnO2 and conch S2SO4 we get a greenish yellow fumes whereas in case of bromide we get a brown fumes and similarly in case of iodide I minus we are getting here a violet fumes so this is the common test these two are the common test for all the three halogens in case of MnO2 on heating we are getting the different color fumes in case of AgNO3 we get a precipitate of different color now sometimes students are not easily identify the difference between the white or a light yellow or we can say the complete yellow so the next test here is to just infer that it is a chloride bromide or iodide we are adding the NH4OH now if it is completely soluble which means it is an AgCl precipitate if it is partially soluble which means it is a bromide precipitate and if this precipitate remain insoluble which means it is an iodide precipitate so this is the second part of this reaction that we have to dissolve this precipitate in NH4OH test for the chloride ion is the chromyl chloride test now this test is already I have performed and a separate video prepared for that and the link is in the description so for the chromyl chlo chloride test we have to take a solid salt here we have to take a solid salt and the test tube must be dry so to this we are adding the potassium dichromate K2Cr207 a solid potassium dichromate and then we are adding the conch S2SO4 now sometime when we add the conch S2SO4 directly form the fumes or after heating it form a red color fumes these red color vapors are the chromyl chloride and these are very hazardous so just when you are performing this try to not inhale that uh, vapors so what happened 
to the solid salt we are adding the potassium dichromate and conch SO4 then the red color vapors of chromyl chloride is formed and these vapors then passed into a next another test tube for example this is a test tube and we are getting the vapors from here so we are passing it in another test tube containing the sodium hydroxide solution on passing these red vapors this solution turn yellow in color then we further add lead acetate into it a lead acetate solution into it then this solution turn yellow in color because of formation of lead chromate so again i am repeating what you have to perform in this case you have to take a solid salt to this you have to add potassium dichromate and the conch SO4 on heating the red vapors are obtained these red vapors when passed into sodium hydroxide it turns yellow in color and if we are adding the lead acetate into it then the yellow precipitate of lead chromate is formed so this is a confirmatory test for the chloride now the next test is the chlorine water test now what happened in this case we have to take any of the salt for example it can be iodide salt or a bromide salt to this aqueous solution aqueous solution of this salt we have to add hcl then we have to add 2 ml of carbon disulfide and then we have to add the chlorine water in the both cases we have to add the chlorine water this is separately we are performing then in the carbon disulfide layer if it turns orange which means the salt contain bromide in it and if this carbon disulfide will become violet in color it infer from this we infer that the salt contain iodide in it so this is a common test just like AgNO3 which can be performed for all the halogen now chlorine water can be easily performed for Br- and I- Till now we have already discussed all these confirmatory tests that is to the salt, solid salt if we add a conch SO4 and if we get the colorless gas then it is a chloride, if it is a reddish brown gas, bromide, dark violet vapors then it is a iodide. Then further confirmatory tests are the AgNO3 test, MnO2 test, clo chromyl chloride test and the chlorine water test. Now the next observation here is if we are taking a solid salt and to this if we are adding conch s 4 and the red brown vapors obtained now for example in bromide also we are getting the red brown vapors but these red brown vapors will turn the ferrous sulfate solution black whereas in that case if we are passing that over the starch paper it turn yellow so by this we confirm that it contain nitrate in it and for the nitrate a very important and famous reaction is the ring test and the copper chip test now what happened in ring test in a ring test first of all we are taking the aqueous solution of a nitrate for example this is a very important question for the viva that is a ring test now what we have to do in this case we have to take a nitrate salt and we have to prepare the aqueous solution and in that aqueous solution we have to add the ferrous sulfate and then uh, the ferrous sulfate must be freshly prepared you take a ferrous sulfate salt add water into it and then prepare that solution add this solution into the nitrate solution then to this test tube you have to add conch SO4 at the angle of 45 degree then there is a formation of a brown ring at the junction and this is an important viva question that what is the formula of that ring that is FeNO H2O whole 5 SO4 that is penta aqua nitrosyl iron 2 sulfate so what is the test here you have to take a salt solution first of all you have to take a salt solution to this you have to add the freshly prepared FeSO4 then in this solution you have to add conch SO4 and you have to tilt the test tube at the angle of 45 degrees Celsius so that that ring not easily dissolve and you have to add add that H2SO4 slowly so that a ring is formed at the junction an important question what is the formula of this ring it is the FeNO Now the last anion of the, this group is the acetate ion that is if we are adding the conch SO4 and we are getting the vinegar like smell which turn that fumes turn the blue litmus red which confirms that it contain an acetate into it. Now the two confirmatory tests for this are FeCl3 and the oxalic acid test. Now in case of FeCl3 we have to just add that FeCl3 into the 
salt solution and if it turn blood red in color it infer that it contain acetate into it now what happened in case of oxalic acid we have to take a salt then we have to add the solid oxalic acid then we have to add the few drops of water and make a paste and you can just smell that paste you are getting the vinegar like smell and then just an ester test you have to take a salt solution to this you have to add a conch ester so four and a few drops of ethyl alcohol and then you are getting a fruity smell which infer that it contain acetate into it so this is a complete flow chart for third part of the analysis is the independent ion test that is for the sulfate and phosphate so if you are adding a dilute h2so4 or a conch h2so4 and you are not getting any observation which means it contain a sulfate or a phosphate as a anion so a very common test for the sulfate take a salt solution add hcl and then bacl2 then formation of white precipitate of baso4 is there now this baso4 the white precipitate which is formed is insoluble in conch hcl so this is a one confirmatory test for the sulfate and second one is a lead acetate test take a salt solution add lead acetate then again lead sulfate a white precipitate of a lead sulfate is formed and these white precipitate will be soluble in the ammonium acetate solution now now the confirmatory test for the phosphate again take a salt solution to this add conch hno3 heat it and then add ammonium molybdate yellow precipitate obtained infer that it contain phosphate in it and second confirmatory test is the magnesia mixture test take a salt solution add dilute hcl dilute hcl boil off with this mixture and then add magnesia mixture now magnesia mixture is a mixture of nh4cl and mgcl2 and you have to boil this mixture preparing the aqueous solution then cool it and then add nh4oh so this become a magnesia mixture when we are adding this in a salt solution containing hcl we are getting the white crystalline precipitate so this is a complete description of the anion analysis which contain a three category a dilute hso4 conch hso4 and the independent salt so you can easily analyze the anion on the basis of this flow chart so this is a complete flow chart for the anion analysis you can easily learn from this flow chart a dilute hso4 group a conch hso4 group and the independent group